everyone. I'm Ryan Prophet with Future Home Loans, where the future is bright. We're here today with Daniel Danger Danius with United Real Estate Gallery. And our guest today is Christian with Alpha Foundations. Hello, Christian. What's going on, everybody? Thanks for having me on today. I appreciate it. Yeah, like as you mentioned, my name is Christian with Alpha Foundations. I've been with the company just over a year. Um, we specialize in foundation and structural repair, crawl space repair, and we do concrete lifting. Cool, man. Um, so Alpha Foundations, you know, some people, it's probably the hope that they don't have to call an Alpha Foundations, um, but you guys definitely provide a solution when people are in a challenging situation. So starting off, um, can you just kind of give a quick synopsis of like, you know, what the foundation of a home, um, you know, what it is and, and, and um, you know, how, what kind of uh, negative impacts it could have if you have those structural problems? Sure. So the foundation of the house, really, there's two main styles of construction, especially in this area. You're going to have slab homes and you're going to have pier and beam homes or crawl space homes. Um, the slab home is going to be constructed of a poured uh, concrete footing around the perimeter with a concrete slab everywhere else in the home, whereas a pier and beam home or a crawl space home is going to have columns that wood is going to span across, so you will actually have a gap in between the ground itself and where your floors are. So what can happen a lot of times caused by whether it be poor compaction of the soil when it was initially built, um, washout from you know all the rain and torrential downpours that we do get here in Florida, and also dry out. Uh, you can have settlement that can occur. So as that concrete and all that weight of the home starts to creep down into the ground further, uh, then you'll start noticing cracks. Uh, you'll start to noticing sloping floors gaps in between your baseboards, drafts coming in from the outside or underneath the home, unlevel floors, and just a number of issues that can come from having a uh, a bad start and a bad base to to your home. That's all awesome. awesome. So I, I see your uh, trucks all around town. I mean, you're all over the place. So is this a common problem here in Northeast Florida? Yes, yes, it is. So we have uh, probably 50 employees just in the Jacksonville market. Um, we cover everywhere from Palm Coast all the way up to Brunswick and St. Simons into South Georgia uh, and as far east as uh, or as far west as Lake City. Um, so quite a big territory that we cover. We do have a lot of issues. We have, like I said, 50 full time people who are, you know, constantly either working on installing, inspecting, uh, whatever it might be. And then we do have all offices all over Florida. So we, we cover the entire state all the way down into the Keys as far west as Mobile. Um, and like I said, we also cover South, South Georgia. So yeah, foundations with all, as much rain as we get and the soil types that we have around here are always going to be a concern uh on homes so if you have a home with a on a slab um and let's say someone's got brick and i know one of the signs is you know they'll see kind of the stair stepping on the brick uh the cracks there um what are some of the solutions that you guys come in to be able to fix a problem like that sure so on slab homes and sometimes on pier and beam homes we're going to use something called a helical pier or a push pier what that is, is a piece of galvanized steel that's about three inches thick. Think of it like a tube that has two blades fixed at the end of it. Uh, we're going to actually use a bobcat or a backhoe with a drilling attachment on it that is going to screw into the earth anywhere in this area, typically around 12 to 24 feet. Uh, it can be deeper depending on what soil types we're encountering there. So we're going to screw that in past the active layer of soil that can shift, wash out, move, whatever it is, until we get to uh, what we like to call load-bearing strata, or dirt that is so tightly compacted, it is mathematically impossible for these piers to be pushed down any further. At that point, we then use an L-shaped bracket as if it were a shelf to go underneath the perimeter footing of the home and be able to lift up. So once we have that, that is going to then 
permanently stabilize and secure the perimeter foundation of it. Uh, sometimes if we are attempting to get, you know, a good amount of lift, we will have to use uh, what we call poly renewal, which is a structural polyurethane foam to then support the slab itself. Because if we're attempting to lift up the foundation itself in the concrete, sometimes we then create a void. So there would be a pocket of air in between the ground and where the concrete is. We have to fill that in somehow. And that's where that structural foam comes into play to make sure that even though the perimeter is supported, we have support all the way through underneath that concrete as well. Wow. I find this uh, topic so fascinating with all the stuff that you have to do. How did you uh, get in this industry? So uh, Alpha Foundations was actually started in my hometown of Tallahassee uh, 20 years ago. So I grew up seeing these trucks everywhere. Come on, man. You know, it's all about the Knowles. So we, uh, I, I grew up seeing these trucks all over the road. I had some buddies who worked for them. Uh, they really give us an opportunity to uh, make a great living with them. So I knew how well my friends did. I had applied a couple times, eventually got the call up to, uh, to give it a shot. And that's when I got on with the company and then moved over here to Jacksonville to, uh, to help them out as an inspector. Um, but like I said, they've been in business for a long time. Recently, we've become an employee-owned company as well. So everybody from the guy who's, you know, installing and digging holes on the outside of your house to me, to the management is going to have some skin in the game, which is also uh, gives us a lot of ownership and some pride in what we do to go above and beyond for the customer as well. Yeah. Um, now, if... Um... You, you did a presentation that we got to see and uh, there was a lot of great visuals. Like, so if people are hearing this and hearing just you describe about repairs and, you know, it's possible it could go over people's head, but obviously if they have an issue, you can really show and illustrate to them uh, how those repairs can take place. And it was really cool to see um, with crawl spaces, um, crawl space repairs. Is, is that an easier fix many times as far as the access that you're able to have to a crawl space, as opposed to, getting under a slab or, or do they both have their challenges? They both have their challenges for sure. So crawl spaces vary in size, uh, how clean they are. It can, uh, it can become difficult as well. Uh, if we're just having to, you know, support uh, in the center of one room, it's a relatively easy process. Say someone has a kitchen that they're remodeling and they know they're gonna be putting in a giant island with a huge piece of granite on top, and it's a, a older home that might not have the necessary support to handle all that weight from the addition, uh, we can go under there and put a couple jacks with some supplemental steel beam under there. So then that way we can, you know, give it the support it needs. So you're not having bouncy floors or rattling floors or sloping floors. So it can be easier. But then again, you know, you're you're crawling under something that has been sealed up for a number of years. It cannot be very fun and it can be pretty skinny uh, for us to be able to do what we need to do. We need about 18 inches of height to be able to work in, which is still challenging, to say the least. Um, both have their ups and downs. Uh, access can be an issue, especially on slab homes. Uh, a lot of homes that are in these newer construction areas with the zero lot lines and things like that, we're having to get creative in how we get these jobs installed. But uh, either way, we're going to find a way to help out the customer and make sure that you know their foundation is secure and their home is uh, is covered for a long, long time. Yeah, I um, I oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ryan. No, go ahead. I, no, I was going to say, uh, speaking of crawl spaces, I had a listing. Um, in Avondale, super, I think it was 1922 home. And uh, I didn't realize it had a crawl space uh, for a while. And it's, it's because the ground came up to the base of the house. And uh, so when we found out that there were foundation issues and crawl space issues, it was really a nightmare because there wasn't that clearance that you're talking about. Um, and I mean, they couldn't even get like a Rover drone to drive under there because it was so tight with pipes and stuff under the ground. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what, uh, what the latest is with that property, but, but
but I've seen firsthand what those challenges can be um, with being able to access them. I mean, this one just over time, the the dirt around it had, in the front, you literally couldn't see that there was a crawl space. It, it met the ground, and and if it ever rained, water would just flood in there and just sit under, uh, sit and pull up under the house. Um, I didn't end up selling the house, so no one's coming <laughs> coming after me. <laughs> Uh, and, and that was the reason. I mean, we had a contract and we did all these inspections and stuff like that, but people just kept on kind of banging their heads against like, what are we going to do about this crawl space? And at the time, the costs were so that the people that I was involved with didn't want to get involved with it. And you guys came out and, you know, try to take a look at it, but that was definitely a challenge. Um, so yeah, those, what, what about that? When, when water is kind of flooding under a crawl space, what kind of impact can that have on a, on a foundation? Sure. So water and wood, uh, as everyone knows, don't mix very well. So you get water, especially in these areas uh, around Jacksonville, where you're very close to the river. Uh, drainage is an issue. You know, we get these torrential downpours and it might stay wet and have standing water in some people's yards or in the road for not even hours, but sometimes days. Um, that can cause, whether it be microbial growth, wood rot, musty, nasty smells. Uh, it can lead to a number of issues. We do have ways to kind of get around that and to mitigate these issues when it comes to water management. Uh, the first of them being what we call crawl drain. So think of it essentially as a French drain that would go around the perimeter of your home on the inside of the crawl space connected to a sump pump that would be piped out to discharge pretty far away from the house, usually about 10 to 15 feet or somewhere where it can drain away properly. Um, the other issue is even though we get that the, the majority of the water out, the water cycle works in one specific way. It rains, it evaporates back up. And then a lot of times if it is in your crawl space, it'll get it'll hit the subfloor or the floor joist wood, and then it gets absorbed into that wood. Now your wood is at too high of a moisture level. Once again, leads to microbial growth, wood rot, bad smells, tons of issues that can occur from that. So in that circumstance, what we're gonna do is called an encapsulation. Essentially where we use two different layers of a uh, film um, liner. So it's a true 20 mil thick polyester cord uh, reinforced liner that we put down along with what we call drainage matting, which is a dimpled, thick, harder plastic liner that goes down first to protect it, but also allow that groundwater to move freely underneath it so it can get to that crawl drain and those sump pumps like it needs to. And then we put a dehumidifier in there. So that dehumidifier is set to a very specific uh, humidity point, which is 55% humidity. What that allows it to do is send that microbial growth into a dormant state where it's no longer going to be continuing to reproduce and spore. It also draws out a lot of the moisture from the wood, but not too much where it can become brittle or dry rotted um, and just protect everything and almost make the underneath of your home a conditioned space instead of it just being out in the open and getting, you know, gross and nasty and wet. Another issue that we run into a lot is, especially in Florida during the summertime, it's 99 degrees and 99% humidity. Underneath your house is much cooler because it's in the shade. Um, there's not as much air movement. So as that hot, humid air comes in, it meets cool air. What happens then? Condensation. So you actually can get condensation that'll start to form on the wood, leading to even more of these moisture issues. So when we do our encapsulation, we're going to completely seal off any outside air from being able to come in. Uh, patch all the vents, seal those up put a custom fit door uh, for your entrance of the crawl space that has weather stripping on it. So no other outside air is able to get in and we can continue to condition that space efficiently. The other cool thing is with that dehumidifier, it's automatically ejecting that water into our sump pump, which I've already told you is now routed, you know, 10 to 15 feet outside of your crawl space. So that water, instead of just being able to sit there and collect is being pumped way far out away from your home. So we're taking, we have multiple avenues to be able to take care of uh, water issues and water mitigation that can really extend the life of your home, make it a more comfortable living space and uh, really protect the value of your home itself. 
you sound like you got a lot of options for them, which is what you need when you have these types of problems. Um, Christian, how would somebody get in contact with you if they had something that was going on with their house and they wanted to have it inspected or if they just wanted to grow a mustache like you? <laughs> I appreciate it, man. So uh, I have a personal cell phone that I keep on with me probably too much. You can ask the wife. Um, that phone number is 904-495-8053. Uh, I will also include my email in there. It's christian.trake at alphafoundations.com. But I'm sure we can put that in the show notes somewhere for them. All right, good stuff. I think I have one more uh, question for you that I think is probably a good one to end on. But um, if someone right now is concerned and they realize like, yeah, we probably have a foundation issue and they're like, but this could be expensive and they're like putting off the repair. Is it the kind of thing where like, oh, just wait five years and then you can do it. It'll be the same uh, repair then as it is now. Or like, I, I imagine there's some concerns that like, hey, it might be a big thing to deal with, but the sooner you do, the better. Like, how would you speak to that? Sure. So uh, definitely at least get an inspection and know where you stand at currently. Uh, when we do our inspection, part of what we do is going to be taking elevations throughout your house. So if there is settlement, we'll be able to pinpoint where at and exactly how much. Those come into handy in circumstances like you're talking about. Uh, it might be a lot to take on at a certain point for a customer. So we'll revisit it in, say, a year or so. We will then compare those elevations that we took a year ago to the ones that we are then taking, you know, in the future. That way we can tell, okay, has the moving stagnated? Is it continuing to move? Has it gotten worse? And is it starting to affect other areas instead of the area that we initially pinpointed? Um, in the... Today's world, nothing is getting less expensive. Uh, everything seems to be getting more and more pricey uh, the longer you wait. So will it be cheaper in the future? Most definitely not. Uh, will it be a dramatically bigger fix? Hopefully not. Um, but uh, it is something that you definitely do not want to push off too far uh, because it can cause other issues. Everything is tied into your foundation. Your walls are connected to your foundation. Your walls connect to your drywall, which connect to your windows, which connects to your roof, which if one if everything starts at the foundation, if the foundation is uh, compromised and is failing, then it can cause damage to everything else and can lead to much bigger repairs down the road.